time. Well, I do. I do them on Patreon, not on uh, not in the public, and that's because every time I do it, the comment section gets spammed. And as a result, on this video, I have turned the comments off. I do apologise. 99% I, I, of people do the right thing, and it is a fantastic way to interact with you guys and talk and have a chat. But there's always a few people that will say, Robbie, can you give me a shout-out? Or, Robbie, where's a good spot for this? And then they'll copy and paste, 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 paste. And the last couple of times I've done a live video, I didn't enjoy myself. And one of my things about this whole YouTube thing is that I've got to enjoy myself. If I'm not enjoying myself, then I've got to stop. I love fishing, I love filming, and I enjoy what I do. But when I don't enjoy it, I've got to stop doing it. And I stopped doing the lives because I wasn't enjoying it, just because the comment sections were getting comment section was getting spammed. I wanted to go live uh, throughout Melbourne's lockdown last year, and I asked it a couple of weeks, but then I just got the spam was just overwhelming, so I stopped. So I do apologise for having the comment section turned off. But anyway, I just thought I'd go live, and if you happen to be sitting around on a Saturday night board, well, hopefully this will keep you entertained. Now, let's talk about silver perch. I love silver perch. I'm quite new to the silver perch thing. As you guys know, I've been fishing for a long time, and I've never caught one until a couple of weeks ago. And I caught a few with Rowan over on the Goulburn River. Then a few days ago, I caught a few here in Wangaratta, and that video is going to be coming up one night this week. And I'm starting to learn how to catch them. I'm just beginning my journey into the world of silver perch. I've learned enough about golden perch or yellow belly and redfin and murray cod that I know the right time of the year and the right time of the day. We'll never know everything about the fish, but I'm at a point where I know enough that I can catch them regularly and consistently. But silver perch, I don't. I'm still learning. But from what I've learned, I've gone out and I've bought a tackle box and some stuff I'm going to put in it now and I'm going to show you what I've got. And I've, uh, I'm going to dedicate this. This is going to be my silver perch tackle box. Righto. Also, I've been doing a bit of research. I've been reading a lot about silver perch. I've been speaking to some scientists. And I've been speaking to, uh, to some old timers that have eaten a lot of silver perch in the past. And they're a fascinating fish. Silver perch, the silver perch and Macquarie perch. Let's compare them. They're both endangered in their natural environment because they can't spawn very well for a number of reasons, including lakes is a big one. The difference between the silver perch and the Macquarie perch is the silver perch can, can be artificially bred in captivity easy, and they can produce them en masse, which means thousands and thousands and thousands of them, which makes them commercially available to buy as fingerlings in stock. And that's why fisheries have gone nuts and stocked silver perch into every little pond in the state so that we can go out and enjoy catching them. Now, because they're easy to they're uh, easy to breed, they're uh, they're subject to a size and bag limit, but they're not protected. Here in Victoria, we can keep a silver perch if it's over thirty centimeters, but we can only keep it out of still water, a lake or a dam, or one of the many family friendly ponds that have been stocked. So my mission is to try and catch a legal size one so that I can cook it and eat it and see what they taste like. But anyway, let's set up the silver perch thing to assist me on that mission. I had to go to Shepparton today. Big shout out to my friend Laura Stahl from New South Wales Roads and Maritime. And uh, we went over to the Maritime Safety Victoria, had a little stall over at Shepparton and they showed us how to change their, their canisters on our life jackets and stuff. And while I was there, I stopped at Anaconda and on the way in with my dad and I brought this stuff. So I've got the cheap tackle box. That's just a bit of paper that can go on the floor. Now, one thing I've learned about silver perch is that they like very small hooks. These are size six, size six hooks. I'm gonna forget that number because what I do when I buy hooks, I open these packets and I just pour them all straight into a container and then I never see the packet again and I can never remember what size they are. So when someone says to me, what size hooks are you using? I normally say about half the size of my thumbnail. <laughs> but anyway, let's pour them in there. Oh, they're all out. So usually when people say, what size hooks are you using? I'll say about that big. But that is a size six hook. One of the things that I've learned is that silver perch have got very small mouths and they, uh, they, they like to take very small hooks. So they get caught on very small hooks. There's another, this is a different sort. What's that one? That's a mustard fine worm hook. This is a shore catch bait holder. These are gold in color. This is a size eight. Now, I, didn't, uh, I wouldn't have known. I didn't go in looking for size 8 hooks. I just went in looking for hooks that were this size. I'll put them next to them. There's still one in the pack. Hang on. Right, so I'll get them out. 
size six and size eight, similar size hooks, and they're the hooks. Uh, the, this, they're the hooks I'll be using to target silver perch. I went out and bought these sinkers, size one. I don't know what that means. They're that size. They're small. They're very small. Similar size to a pea. I and mean, when I say a pea, I don't mean something you've done behind the tree last night at the back of the pub. I mean a green pea that you eat with your mashed potatoes and a bit of gravy. That size. I'll put them up the back. I have absolutely no reason for putting them up the back. I just am. So I've got some really small sinkers, some really small hooks. I'm going to try float fishing for silver perch. From the reading that I've done, they often feed in the middle of the water column. They're not a, a true bottom feeder like a lot of our natives. They'll feed anywhere throughout the water column, especially in ponds. So I'm going to try some floats. I probably should have grabbed some split shot while I was there. Well, these can go. Well, these get their own little compartment each. Right, there's my floats. Uh, what else did I want to put in? Oh. I'm going to put in some Strike Tiger Lua scent, just because I've got a few bottles of this stuff and it looks really cool. If you haven't seen it already, the uh, Strike Tiger have just released this new Lua scent. This is the UV treated. If you shine, actually, I don't know whether this will work in this low light, but if you shine a UV light on it, it lights up. You can see it lighting up green there. Oh, so does the float, look. <laughs> this is what they call a black LED light or a UV light. But yeah, you can, you can see the uh, you can see the UV treatment in the Lua scent there. So I'm going to put that in there as well. Just because it's Lua scent doesn't mean you have to use it with lures. You can use it with anything. So I'm going to throw that in the front. So there's this there's my silver perch setup. I've got one, two, three, four bubble floats, some small sinkers. I probably could do with a few more sinkers. I haven't got very many, but I can build on that. And if you can hear a cocky at the moment, that's my phone. I should have put it on silent, but forgot. Some size eight, and some size six hooks. And some Strike Tiger UV treated Lua scent. That's the silver perch box. I did have a black marking pen in front of me before. I don't know where I put it. Oh well. I did have a black marking pen here. I'm going to get a black texture and write silver perch on the top of it. But anyway, folks, I apologise for the uh, the noises. It's because I forgot to put my phone on silent. There it is, my silver perch kit. I am on a journey. I am on a journey to learn as much as I can about silver perch because I are stocking so many. These things have the potential to be our, our own, very own Australian native redfin. Small fish that the kids can catch and we can enjoy for a feed and I'm excited about that. Just quickly again before I go, I apologise for having the comments turned off, but this is what happens when people just spam the comment section when I go live. It's, uh, it's just so much easier for me to show you what I want to show you, present what I want to present without the, uh, without the comments coming, without the comments being spammed. Anyway, folks, just uh, before I go, I'll just quickly give you a heads up. I've got some content ready this week. After the five-day lockdown, by the end of the five-day lockdown, I had nothing. Everything was used up and exhausted. I had nothing in my buffer. I've got a few videos in a folder that I'm, I'm trying to hold on to until winter to uh, have a, a segment called From the Vault during winter where I can reflect on some of my summer fishing adventures. Uh, but uh, just since the lockdown, I've been out. I've got some really cool content. I've got a, uh, a redfin video coming out tomorrow night where I catch some really nice redfin. Not monsters, but big enough to get a feed to it once a couple of times. So I've got a really awesome kayak fishing for redfin video coming out tomorrow night. And I've got a silver perch video coming out during the week as well. And I've got a Murray cod fishing video too. I'm having a blast. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Stay tuned to see how I go on my journey to catch an edible silver perch. I hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday night. Tomorrow night it's redfin time.